This is the Pacific Ocean uh, along the central coast of Mexico, maybe about 40 minutes or so north of Puerto Vallarta. Um, and we're here with the family uh, down for Christmas vacation. And it's low tide. And low tide is a great time to look at the geology, look at the exposed rocks, uh, and see what they have to tell us about things. Uh, typically, I do these videos with some information and you know, I've done maybe a little bit of research or I know a little bit about the area. Today I'm really flying blind. Uh, there's not a whole lot I know about uh, these rocks. I tried to do a quick search and there wasn't a whole lot of information about the geology of this area. But what's interesting about this place, I'm going to start with what I, what I do know, which is pretty short, and then maybe we'll just walk along this cliff end and, and see what we find here because a certain amount of geology involves just kind of looking at what you see and if you know enough you can kind of interpret or infer um, some of the history and some of the geologic stories there. So I want to kind of start with this silly uh, little map I've drawn of the U.S.-Mexican border and the Baja California Peninsula. Um, and we are way down here, kind of where the little stick is here, along the central coast uh, of Mexico on the Pacific side. And if you look at the, the coastline of Mexico, on the Pacific side, you'll kind of see this pronounced little notch here. And the notch that you'll see on any map, or this map here that I've drawn, um, if you can kind of imagine Baja California, the tip of Baja California, fitting into that notch, that's exactly what was happening here about uh, eight to 10 million years ago. Baja California was once part of mainland Mexico, um, and the whole west coast of Mexico was a subduction zone, and so we had um, one plate in the Pacific plunging underneath the North American plate and a series of volcanic uh, ranges right along the uh, west coast of Mexico. But what happened about eight to six or so million years ago is the plate boundary changed a little bit and this plate here uh, began to move in a more uh, northwesterly direction. And when it did so, it actually took a chunk of Mexico and ripped it or rifted it away from uh, the mainland. And so the Baja California Peninsula used to be attached to the Mexican mainland, but was actually uh, rifted or stretched and ripped apart and then also translated or moved to the Northwest. And so now we have a plate boundary that runs down the Gulf of California uh, and then feeds up into, in California, the San Andreas fault system. And so what's interesting is I actually did uh, my master's research on some rocks in Baja, California. So I know a little bit about their history. And so these rocks here, even though we're a long ways away from Baja, we're down here at this little notch. Um, and remember that Baja used to be connected here. So there is kind of a, a shared history before the rifting started of these rocks. So we're gonna take a look um, at what these rocks can show us here. Uh, and maybe the first thing you see here uh, is this black band running across here. This is a dike of basalt, and there's a couple of these along the way. If we kind of come up a little closer here, we can see uh, the basalt extending down to the west. And then we can see this kind of reddish unit sitting above um, it, chunks of rock embedded in it. And so this looks like some sort of either volcanic breccia uh, or maybe a sedimentary deposit. We can see there's not a lot of layering in it. It's kind of massive. And then we have these dikes that are injected into them. And so these dikes actually uh, would have formed later as magma moved its way through fractures in the rock uh, and formed these dikes. This dike is actually oriented at kind of a uh, more of a horizontal or nearly sort of a gentle orientation. But other ones uh, down the way we'll look at have a little different one. If we look over here along the coastline at low tide, we can see that there's these elongated troughs running uh, towards the ocean out from the coastline. Uh, and in places, what you can see, if we come over here, we can see some smaller scale features. They're pretty similar. We can see that they're filled with these, with these rounded rocks, these very hard resistant volcanic and granitic rocks. And so what happens here is um, when the tide comes in and the tide goes out and the waves come in, the waves go out, uh, it drags these rocks along the bedrock uh, and scours out, kind of erodes these little troughs here. Of course, the rocks get kind of banged together over time. And so they tend to get quite rounded. And we can see a little pile of them in here 
along with some of the shells. Um, as the rocks just kind of get banged together with that consistent wave action, uh, chips off the corners. The rocks that remain are really hard and resistant. Um, and they tend to be mostly, again, volcanic rocks. I've seen some granites in here, a few metamorphic rocks. And these are probably the older rocks. These are probably rocks maybe from the Cretaceous and Jurassic period uh, that would have formed when uh, there was the subduction zone along the Pacific coast. Uh, if we wheel around over here, we can see another little uh, basalt dike actually kind of pinching out a little bit there. So sometimes as the supply of magma works its way into the rocks, um, it eventually kind of dies out. Uh, this vertical feature here uh, could be another dike, but to me it looks like what's called a clastic dike. So it's a fracture that's developed in these brown uh, sedimentary rocks or volcanic, uh, broken up volcanic rocks. And then it's been infilled uh, by sand and silt and maybe some other mineral material. Um, but one of the cool features I happen to see down here is another dike, uh, but instead of being more horizontal, we have one uh, that's more vertical. So we can see that it's cutting through uh, the layers of rock here um making a beautiful contact the other thing we can see here that's somewhat common with these dikes is you can see the discoloration here you can see uh, the darker brown here a lighter shade of brown and then the black basalt dike itself and that's pretty common as these dikes inject into the existing rocks uh, the heat of the lava or the magma will sometimes discolor and alter uh, the surrounding wall rocks there What's great about this dike is we can see it's sticking out uh, in relief, so it's much harder and more resistant. But we can actually also trace it out, and at low tide it works pretty nicely. We can trace it out uh, as a fin of rock that extends some distance out into the ocean. And so this is a, a pretty continuous dike. Obviously it may extend even further than what we can see here, uh, but pretty remarkable nonetheless. So. Um, pretty cool stuff here. Again, we have some volcanic rocks, uh, probably from the Miocene, probably about, again, six or so, maybe six to ten million years ago, uh, when this area was along the subduction zone, forming volcanoes and uh, the sediments being shed off the volcanoes here. The fact that these, this sedimentary unit, or maybe volcanic unit, has very angular chunks of the basalt in it suggests that maybe it was uh, fragmental. Maybe as these uh, magmas were being injected, it was actually somewhat explosive and fragmenting and breaking uh, the surrounding rocks. We can see that that grades up into another basalt. Um, the basalt here has some really interesting weathering to it. You can see all the little holes here. This is just basic salt weathering. So this is just uh, the spray from the ocean. There's a little crab right there. Uh, well, what's left of him. But the spray from the ocean actually eroding out um, and the salt crystallizing in the rock on those hot summer days and the, as the salt expands, it breaks apart the rock uh, and forms these kind of honeycomb looking cavities here. Um, and so cool weathering features in the basalt, uh, the dikes themselves. Obviously there's all the tide pooling and other things that are interesting about this place as well, but uh, not a bad day to look at some geology while we're on the beaches here in Central Mexico.